I say we kill him now and get it over with. Previously on LMO Video. Uh, there are no helps. Okay, so... This is when we stop taking notes. <laughs> this is a tissue of lies. Help me, Wilma, distract him. Mark, what's wrong? It's Quince. He's frozen my controls. And now, the conclusion. <laughs> Uh, so at the time I was making those notes, I was drunk. I was doing it from memory, trying to remember the points that you and I had hit while we were to watching fair, it. To be fair, I was helping you. Yes, you, he, he came out to find out what I was doing. I was sitting out in the garage smoking a cigar, typing on my computer that I keep out in the garage, from you know, trying to reconstruct from memory the stuff that we had... And so so this, is an actu this is an actual note. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't do this to me. You, you, you said, uh, the Battle of Boromir telephone pole arrows. It took you five times to not type the word plow. <laughs> telephone plow arrows. You want to sell me down the river? Guess what, buddy? And I'm a touch typist, by the way. <laughs> yes, you were. Um, all right, so Return of the King. Return of the King. Let's talk about Return of the King. The extended the edition. The king came back. Did you know that? <laughs> All four hours and 20 minutes. And that's the shortest book of the three. That should have been a clue about Hobbit. That Probably. Really should have been. Yeah. We should have been clued in. So, okay, we start with Return. Now, to be fair, much of the beginning of Return of the King is the end of Two Towers. True. I believe she, everything up through Shelob is Two Towers. I believe you're right. So... We have, uh, at the beginning, we have the hobbits, uh, they're, they're making their way to the, the steps. At, uh, Bypassing the Tower of Sir Thungo. Right. Sir and uh, there's, there's moment like they, they see the, um, the statue with the, head, uh, the rock bound in, in, in the head. Right. That looked pretty cool. Flowers growing out of the head. They did that very well. Um, and, they, and they continue on till they get to the, the stairs. I thought they did. They did a great job on those stairs, man. They were that was just don't beautiful. fall down those. Do stairs. not fall. You, that, they become a water slide. Yeah, a very bumpy, hard, painful water slide. Yeah, they, those stairs were awesome. That that was an amazing visual. So halfway up the stairs, Gollum pulls the. Uh, I'm going to throw the bread off the side, sprinkle it right, over. Right, right. And uh, and Frodo says that seems legit and kicks yeah. Sam. I, I, you know, I hate that. I really do. I don't know how that happened in the book. Did they, they didn't get separated like that, did they? There was a falling there out. There was between. a falling out, but it wasn't that way, and it wasn't that severe. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just feels like, you're really going to believe this guy? Okay. I tried to kill you twice, but okay. Um, yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like... Uh, I mean, I guess... It happened, I just didn't like the way it happened. Just from a, it, it, it just didn't feel like, it, it didn't feel legit. I don't, if I, if true. my memory is served me correctly, they were, they didn't separate. You know, like Frodo and Sam did not go. I think there was some sort of separation once they got to, because of Shelob. Right, right. Once, once they, they, they entered Schlobflare together. Yeah. And yeah, there was some separation after they got in there, but it was more along the lines of it's dark and I can't see. <laughs> so, because Sam's sword could not cut the webs. Right. Only Sting. Only Sting could. Okay. So, so, but other than that, they get up there. I, Shelob is a nightmare inducing. Oh God. And well done. Very well done. Uh, I like that fight. I, I don't remember if you had a problem with it or not. Not especially. No. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's you not. Mentioned, you mentioned that in order, f like he stabbed Shelob, and she put her weight on the sword yeah, that it, he it, held on the ground or whatever. In the in the book, 
he was lying, he had been knocked down, he was lying on his back, and she came up above him and was just gonna smash yeah. down on him. So he just held the sword like that, yeah. and it was her strength that drove the sword into, into, her, into, her. into her, not his. So if you really want to pick some nets, there you go. So yeah, there's there was some question as to whether Sam was physically strong enough to. I I to me that's that's really picking nits. But I like I, I I'm I, a professional nitpicker. I love I love the little scene just before Shelob finally gets him, where he's looking and he sees the tower in the in the distance. Mm -hmm. That is all there. Like they use the bigature and they oh, okay. use the force perspective. Yeah. And so what what you're seeing, he's seeing as an actor. It's not okay. it's all right there. It's just done with a little cool. bit of perspective the trickery. Well done. I love that kind of stuff. I never get tired of it. Um, the the battle with him and Sam was good. The light of a Lindell, fine, good. Um, Are we gonna discuss the mithril shirt and the stinger? So, so yeah, that was a, the truth is, well, let me ask you this. I mean, cause it certainly was in the book. Is this a fuck up in the book as well? To be honest, I, it never occurred to me to even think about this until you asked me this yesterday. So this is, this is the Ryan, Ryan George, I think is his name. Uh, yeah. The guy that does the, the, mm -hmm. the pitch meetings. Pitch meetings. He's like, how did she sting him through that mithril thing? I'm like. So I, mean, I can't unthink of that now. But you didn't think of it. I'm guessing that it. even Tolkien didn't think of it. The only thing we could come up with was she basically stuck, stung him in the ass. Stung him in the ass. That's what we're going for. Just had a little beep. Yeah. Got a little she lab enema going on there. So, but he gets stung. We have no idea how it got through the mithril shirt. Because, you know, that's the thing about getting stung. It can be anywhere. Yeah, because I mean, if they'd done it on the legs, but clearly he gets it right in the gut. Yeah. Unless it was in the dick. <laughs> Ow! Did you, see, think, did you see that stinger? <laughs> now that we think about it, it was in the front, wasn't it? He got stung in the dick. <laughs> oh. oh, my dick! We're really off the rails now. Uh, so he gets wrapped up in the web. Sam goes after him. Uh, they all kill themselves in a, in a ridiculous brawl that I guess happens in the book, so it happened in the movie. Um, okay. Well, all... you're, you're leaving out a very important point the, of where Sam is, or is, is the ring bearer yeah. who carries the ring into Mordor. He does carry the ring into Mordor. Um, but we don't know this yet. We think, we think Frodo still has the ring. Well. We don't realize that he took it off him. So... In the book, we do. In the book, we do. We don't see it in the movie. I don't... I, well, let's... Is that a good review? Is that a good idea? From, from, a, from a narrative movie standpoint, I don't think it's a bad idea. It's like, no, I got the ring. You're good. Well, the way it was portrayed in the book, Sam takes the ring from Frodo because he thinks Frodo's dead. Right. And he does think he's dead in the, in the movie, too. So why wouldn't he take the why ring? Why wouldn't he take the ring? So, yeah... Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. You're right. I, it's one of those things you don't think about. In the, it, that's the thing with the movie versus the book, right? Yeah. In the book, you take your time. You can, you can, you can put it down for a second. You can digest. And you can keep moving. In a movie, you gotta, you gotta keep, going, yeah, he, keep, he, going, keep going. Sam didn't. Sam didn't realize that Frodo was still alive until after the, the orcs picked him up and and said something. And said something. Right. And he's like, oh crap. <laughs> So he goes after him. They have the big fight. He gives him the ring back. And that that's an interesting... I don't know. I can't remember. I was pretty drunk by this time last night. Uh, in the book, and I don't know how they portrayed this, Sam never once put on the ring. Excuse me. He never once put in on the movie. The ring. In the movie. He does in the book. He does? When? Doesn't he? No. Oh, I thought he did. No. I thought he did for one moment he did. Well, he does get tempted, though, right? He gets tempted. Yeah. There's at that point when he's getting ready to cross in the. Remember, we talked about this. Yeah, he's going to become the most badass, most gardener. badass gardener the world. Weeds has ever seen. around the world <laughs> trembled for a moment. <laughs> Dandelions shook in fear. And the closest he ever comes to putting on the ring is like 
doing that thing that Frodo was so fond of, you know, grabbing hold of it like this. Yeah. He does that a lot. Yeah. And it has the effect that orcs looking at him, he's not wearing it, but it, the, the orcs perceive him as bigger, bigger and stronger scarier. and scarier than he, than okay. he is. Okay. There was a moment where he kind of, uh, 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 and then there's a shadow and they kind of freak out and they're like, ah, oh, shit, it's just a hobbit. Let's kick his ass. But uh, he, he kicks their ass, which I honestly, I kind of like because it's like, that's for my old gaff. I kind of like it. I, I just, Sam deserves the moment. He's yeah. earned it. He's earned it. But yeah, that, that was the key. Uh, I, I considered it key that Sam was actually the person who, who physically carried the ring across the border into Mordor. <laughs> okay. But that's it has no effect on the plot other than the fact that the orcs didn't get their hands on oh, the ring. Overall, they kept it pretty close. Yeah. You know, there wasn't, the, you know, this is where you were kind of getting surprised because you're like, they're not allowed to divergence now. Yeah, they were doing, they did that part of the book or Kind of went this well. way and then kind of went back. When, once they got into Mordor, the, the script was pretty good. Okay. So let's leave them off there. Let's go back to the rest of them. Okay. So now we're going to the, well, okay. So they get done with Helm's Deep and they have a big old party at Edoras. Yeah. Which you disliked intently. Yes, I did. So here's a point where they're actually taking more time and you're pissed off. There's just no pleasing you. No, there's not because it didn't happen that way. <laughs> <laughs> For one thing, we discussed this yesterday. Eowyn and the villagers shouldn't have been there. Flat out should not have been there because they all went for the hideouts in the mountains when Which they the, never really showed in the movie at all. When so. the warriors went to Helm's Deep. Right. And that sets up the plot later when Aragorn decides he's going to take the paths of the dead, which conveniently happened, the entrance happens to be up there in that very same region as the hideout. Right. So he has to pass through where Eowyn and the villagers are. Which, that's not, everybody's, so it, there's a divergence and then they come back together. They, they get, they have the party. Which is. They have the drinking game. And, and that, that's the thing. Uh, they never actually, well I won't, I can't say that. Theoden did go back to Edoras, but he didn't stay. What they, what happened, you remember the scene with Pippin and the Palantir? Yes. Okay. So, oh, well, I was going to get to that, but go okay. Ahead. When th that happened, when they right after they had left um, Helm's Deep, Helm's Deep, no, after they left Isengard, they went. For... That's right. So, let, well, we got to go back even further. We got to go back. So they go to Isengard, and that's where they have the death of Saruman, which right. wasn't in which... the movie. It was in the. It wasn't in the theatrical cut. They put it in the extended cut. That's all the same thing that happened in the scouring of the Shire, which is not a thing. I'm not, I'm not going to go there because if I go there, I'll be ranting. You'll be for, very angry. I'll be angry. And, and I think it's all superfluous. I'll be, I'll be sputtering and there'll be profanity and... All right, let, let's just, let's, no, look, let's just go into this real quick. <laughs> you, they went to the Shire, they took over the Shire, mm -hmm. Saruman and, and uh, Worm's Hut. Well, and I, they they, Saruman had been working on this for quite some time. Right. But then when, when the hobbits come back, they have to basically clean, you know, defeat these guys and then clean up the Shire. Right. I find that whole idea superfluous. I've listened to the radio dramas. I've read the books. <laughs> I find the whole thing just a packed on thing. It doesn't need to be there. I like the way to do the movies better. You <laughs> have cursed me and my first horn because of this. So, fine. We'll agree to disagree. But am I... Am I Mostly accurate on where you and I are on that. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> so, fine. We get to Isengard. I think you forgot the part about the curse carrying on to the third generation, but that's beside the point. Wow. <laughs> I'll be dead by then. Yeah. So, the they get to Isengard, and they have the um, the talk with, with uh, Sauron, and then Wormtongue ends up stabbing him in the back, shoving him off the... He falls off the top. You heard you heard the cool story about that, right? On set, where oh yeah yeah, where, where Peter says, Peter Jackson's trying to tell him you know, what how he wants him to scream and everything, and you know Christopher Lee's like, have you ever seen someone stabbed in the back, die from stabbing in the back? 
No, I have. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe he was knighted, right? Yeah. So. And he was SAS in World War II. And... Jackson wasn't stupid enough to argue with him. Um, so, so yeah, he gets he gets tossed off. He lands on that wheel. Again, does his own stunts, and goes underneath <laughs> the water. And uh, that's when Pippin picks up the Palantir. Or Palantir? I, I, I have no I idea don't how to ask pronounce me. that. I've heard it pronounced. I still can't do it right. Hooked on phonics. Palantir. <laughs> um, and they and and then they when they they have their big party and then Pippin takes the thing. Takes the thing. Looks into it and sorry has a conversation with Sauron. Right. <laughs> Which I feel like that wasn't all that. I, I felt like it was fine in the movie. That part of it. It was. Little, it would freak the shit out of me too. It so. was a little overdone. Well, that's that's a that's a recurring topic. Yeah, it's, it, see, in the book, they are camped. Okay, yeah. they're out in the they're out in the wilderness of Rohan, and, and they're camped. Aragorn is with is Aragorn, Gandalf, Theoden, Aylmer, and company, if you will. Pippin does the stealing the Palantir thing. And nobody sees him do this. In, in the movie, you've got Mary's. They're going, Pippin, no, what are you doing? Don't do that, no. In the book, nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. I, he, I don't know. He, 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 he carries it over away from everybody. And the next thing you know, everybody in the camp is awakened by a shrill scream. Which, you know, and, isn't all that different than what happened. Well, it's more subtle. And they find Pippin. Basically lying on his back, mumbling over and over, tell you know, tell Tharman that this dainty is not for him, you know. <laughs> right, right. So basically, uh, Gandalf, I, I'm going to use the word examines him, and you can take that any way you want. Just it. <laughs> try to relax. And con concludes that he's not lying about what was said and so which, forth. Which also is in the movie. Yeah. And basically says, well, you know, you're, we're all very fortunate because if he had asked you, you would have answered. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't have been able to help yourself. Correct. So at that point, Gandalf grabs Pippin, throws him on the back of Shadowfax, and off they go to um, Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith. Yes. Aragorn, Theoden. Which, which is, if, if you look at... The beats. He grabs the thing. They have this, and it's exactly what happened. Oh, and he gives the pal. He gives the gives the palantir to Aragorn. Says you should keep. He this. took it with him, I think, in the movie. He gives the palantir to Aragorn, and you know, basically says that take this in earnest of so things does, because it does, belongs to Aragorn. Does Aragorn actually use it at that point, or does he wait till after the Battle of Pelennor Fields? Oh, it's definitely before the Battle of Pelennor Fields. Okay, so this, so that's that. The same thing happens, but they moved it to the end. Because see, the the whole point of Aragorn using it was he wanted to get you know Sauron to move too fast, basically. Okay. To get to pushing, you know, making. So, so okay, so then we 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 have that Pippin and and Gandalf head to Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith. Uh, and the rest of them start heading to this this area that you keep talking about, where Arwen. They the go to Edor Edoras just briefly. Right. He sends a runner ahead, telling uh, to put out the word. Everybody, you know, all of his fighters meet him at Edoras. So in the movie, what happens is they're sitting in Edoras. Gandalf and Pippin have left. Pippin sneaks up and and, and because. He's like, we need some help. And Denethor is going, no, you know. And so, I'm going to eat cherry tomatoes. Oh, we're getting too far in. No, he, he, I'm, I'm not. I, I know. Okay. He goes and, and he lights the fires. Yeah. And then Edoras heads over to, the, right, they head over to that where you're talking about next to the path of the death. Aragorn heads that way. Aragorn, well, in the movie, Aragorn and everybody heads that way. I'm trying to remember, did everybody go that? Yeah, I think I think everybody did. And because that's where because that's where Eowyn was. And and we have to get Theoden to where Eowyn is. So at this because... point, they all went there. 
Okay. Together. Because that's when Eowyn dresses up as a man and takes Mary with her and... That's later in the movie. So, so obviously what we're saying here is the timeline, the same things happen, but they happen at different times and sometimes in different order. Possibly, except for the, except for the signal fires, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Uh, so, okay. There was an air, a red arrow that they send by a runner instead. Okay, so same, same result, different methods. Well, and also the fact that Denethor is not quite as much of an asshole in the book as he is in the movie because he did send the... He did uh, ask for help. He did ask uh, for Yeah, help. he wouldn't listen to anybody. Um, so he... So, so Pippin decide, uh, swears fealty to Denethor. Um, they begin... I guess kind of, you know... Which, that's another thing that happened, but they got it in the wrong place. Yeah. So then they begin um, trying to get uh, the battlements ready and things like that. And that's when Denethor tells Faramir, uh, go retake his Skillia. And uh, Faramir says, are you fucking nuts? <laughs> and uh, which, yeah, <laughs> he is. Um, but he goes and he does it, uh, even though his is overrun. Um, I missed a spot. I missed a point. Faramir comes back from Asgiliath after it gets overrun. Mm -hmm. They're getting chased by the Nazgul. Uh, Gandalf comes out with and shines the light right. and gets them all back safely. Right. That did happen. That did happen. Then that's when uh, uh, Denethor sends Faramir back out saying, you need to go to retake Asgiliath. Uh, I really should have reread the books last week before we did this. Uh, that's all right. So, uh, uh, so... They, the, the army starts um, filling up Pelennor Fields. They send all the troops that Faramir took, they send their heads back over the wall, and Faramir gets dragged back in on his horse, and, and uh, Denethor thinks he's dead, even though he's not. In the meantime, everybody at Edoras is back at the at the at where the paths of the dead are, okay? Um, that's when Elrond shows up with Elendil. Yeah. <laughs> in the movies. In the movie. <laughs> in the books, uh, you know, we don't see Elrond until again until everything's done. Right. It was Elendil's, or excuse me, Elrond's sons, along with a troop of like fifty Rangers of the North, and they don't have Andoril with them because Aragorn has been carrying Andoril ever since they left since Rivendell. Fellowship. Yeah. And what they do bring is a, a standard. So your your problem with that is is that so this is where I think you and I differ because in this interpretation, if you want to call it that, what we're trying to do is get Aragorn to to accept his destiny as king. And so the moment he, he kind of has, but symbolically, when he takes Elendil at that moment in Andrew. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Andril. Advil. Advil. When he takes Advil, <laughs> um, that's when he's, it's symbolically like it's it, he's completed his, his arc. He is going to do what he needs to do. Where in the book, he's trying to get laid. And he's, that's what Well, it's want. just his arc, his arc in the book. Well, essentially, and see, that's the thing. The book isn't about Aragorn. No, I know. The book is about the hobbits. The The character arcs that are important are Merry, Pippin, Frodo, Which I Sam. think those arcs are still there, but they yeah. added another but one for Aragorn. Ar Aragorn was pretty much a background character. His arc is already, well, let me put it another way. His arc looks flat because his arc is 90 fucking years long and it started well, <laughs> way back here. That's why you got to do your homework, kids. <laughs> Go to the appendices. Isn't this fun? Aren't you entertained? Yo, he has an arc. It just started... Uh, 85 years before the movie started. Right. <laughs> so in the movie, they're trying to give most of these characters at least some kind of arc. And I I appreciate it. And, and because of that, they move the Advil scene to the to that. It doesn't bother me. bothers you. Fine, because it's different. And you don't like things that are different. I don't like things that are different. Get, uh, off, get off my lawn, man. That's right. <laughs> so now we go to... He, so Elrond gives him a says you need to go into the path of the dead. And Elrond did say that he just sent it as a message through his sons. 
I have mixed feelings about the dead. I don't. They suck. <laughs> so, in the book, the well, what are the dead in the book? And what can they do? Really, not a lot, other than induce paralyzing fear. Right. That's pretty much all they do. But you know, other than pissing your pants, they then they could just stand around you for the next ten minutes, go boo, boo. <laughs> well, and, boo, and, boo. and while you're pissing, standing there pissing your pants, the humans can come up and can come up, so somebody else can. Piss. <laughs> So, what, with that not which I did not know, or I didn't remember. I mean, I, that's the impression that you, in the books, you never see a word about the dead actually harming anyone. Okay. They just, they impose mind-paralyzing fear as they, you know, spread out over the field. And they, they the dead are not at, at Pelotor Fields, by the way. No, that's, that's what they got on the ships. They took over the ships, and that was the end of them. And if they... But the, so they make the dead pretty cool in this one, and they save the day. That's all well and good, but the problem is, is that it's like, okay, you can't do one more battle? Because we could really use you over at Mordor Gates, you know? And so when he says, I release you from your bonds, I'm kind of with Gimli. He's like, no, that is a bad idea. <laughs> You only need one more, you finish it out, then you can let them go. They've been in the cave for 7,000 years. What, what's another couple of hours? What's the problem here? So, yeah, I, I got... Now, aside from that, it's pretty cool moments. I mean, cinematically, it's cool. No, cinematically, it's cool as hell. Yeah, and and it's, but, so it's kind of... It's like, well, but I am enjoying I'm, this. I'm trying to remember how detailed the books were about... Because what they're doing is fulfilling an oath. Yeah, and he, I remember... And I'm the, trying to remember what the original oath was. I only read the books once. It's been a while ago. I listened to radio dramas, which were a little bit more uh, to the letter of Tolkien. Yeah. And I don't recall the dead being quite as... I'm trying uh, to remember nuclear. what their... I'm trying to remember the exact wording of their original oath to, to see if there was a, a, a reason why Aragorn couldn't... I did not like, in the extended version, the skulls. And yeah. I don't like Gimli blowing. He just turns into Shaggy. Yeah. I said in the in the book, it's just a very very dark cave. It's a very dark cave. There's no, the only bones that they see on the entire trip through, they find the body of a previous prince of Rohan, who rashly made a vow at a feast they were having that he was going to go check this shit out, and he was never seen again. <laughs> check his wallet. Uh, they, they found him lying in front of a door, a closed door, with broken legs, a broken sword, and there were scratch, mark, scratch marks in the door, like he had been clawing at the door trying to get, trying to get out. Or, or, trying to get in. Or get in. Yeah. I think they used that in Goonies. Did they? Yeah. Because that, that was the point. Chester Copperpot. That was the point in the book, in the narrative. You know, they're, they're walking through the, this dark tunnel, they've got torches. And it's really spooky, but there's it's just a, an edge of like, man, this place is creepy. Yeah. And, and they get and they find this, and Aragorn kneels down next to him, like to see if he's dead or something. I don't know. <laughs> and then he stands up and looks out up around, and it'll you know basically loud voice reveals himself to be who he is. Right. I'm not here to, you know, take your treasure or whatnot that supposedly was on the other side of that door. I ask you to meet me at the Stone of Eric and fulfill your oath. And everything gets deathly silent. Up to this point, I guess they'd been like hearing little like whispers right. and the, everything gets deathly silent for a second. A gust of wind blows through and blows out their torches and they can't get them lit again. And they finish their journey through this tunnel in pitch black darkness because they couldn't get their torches relit. And when they get out the other end of this tunnel, and I can't remember if it was Legolas or Gimli looks behind them as they've exited out and they're out in the open air again. And it's just this vague shadow yeah. of a large army following them. Okay. I, they, I like they, the look of the dead in this. Yeah. I like the kind of the, like, it's kind of a person, but it's kind of a skeleton or a rotting thing. It kind of faces. Zombies. <laughs> Well, yeah. it was more it, like sometimes you could almost see a face, and sometimes you can only see, you know. I think in the I think in the book the description they gave 
The only real good description you got was of the leader of the dead. Yeah. When they met at Eric, the stone of Eric or Eric or however the fuck it's pronounced. And he basically looked like a normal guy, just you could see through him. <laughs> I, I, do, I, I like that. And of course, it was a cool scene. But yeah, they, then if you're going to give them that, like if, if all they could do was scare you, then it would make a, more sense that, well, take them to Mordor. I don't know how effective that's going to be at that point. Uh, the effect of the dead on the people around them in the books reminded me heavily of the effect that the Nazgul had on people around them. Yeah. Just this sense of dread, dread and fear. And fear and but if you, if, of course, if that, the Nazgul could actually hurt you. The Nazgul <laughs> could hurt you. Um, but then the question becomes, you know, well, why? When you make that change, now you now you do look stupid not taking them with you. So I, I, it is what it is. Because it couldn't if he had taken them with him, then people like you would be really screaming. Oh God! So I'm I'm pissed off enough that they that he took them to Peller Fields. You yeah. know, <laughs> um, we do get the the kick-ass Legolas takes down an Oliphant scene. Yeah, and that was worth the price of admission. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing that the first time at the theater. People just stand up clapping. Because at that point, you're like, I'm in. I'm all in. I don't care. So, um, okay. So, they get done with the paddle pill no fields. Now, we switch back to uh, Frodo and Sam. They put on some... Now, this is an extended version. They put on some uh, uh, orc armor. Mm -hmm. And... Um, which looks uh, completely different from any other orc armor we've ever seen. At least the helmets. What's with the beak? I don't know. Uh, they have a moment where they almost get shanghai into one of the armies and then they escape by causing a, pretending to cause a fight or something. And they did get shanghai into one of the armies in the book. They, well, that's kind of what happened. Yeah, they, they, they basically covered like, I don't, I don't know how many miles in a forced march. That's because yeah, and he was pretty tight. I, I don't know how long they were marching, but it's yeah, it's kind of the same deal. I forget how they managed to escape in the book. There, oh, I remember. Uh, they came to a crossroads, and another gang of orcs that was going this way. They didn't cause the fight, but it got really they took advantage. Took of it. advantage of it and yeah. jumped over the wall and disappeared. So that's basically what they did in this one. And then they take off the armor and they head up to Mount Doom. They get attacked by Gollum. Yep. Um, then Frodo goes up. He says, the ring is mine. Gollum bites off his finger. Gollum and Frodo go over the side. Frodo hangs on to the edge. Gollum which, goes into the lava, which we find out lava is apparently like a swimming pool. Yeah. So they're just landing on top of hot rock. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. He may have sank in. I don't he, know. he was one dense motherfucker. He must have been. <laughs> but uh, overall, I, I think the scene is great. I I know. I, they do it for dramatic tension. That Frodo going over the side, that didn't happen. That didn't happen, but it didn't. It doesn't, it doesn't kill the scene at all. No. no um, they run out. Everything happens, you say. The, the battle, uh, one of the things I, I remember hearing about, the battle in, in, in front of the mortar gates, mm -hmm. okay? They, they have a, a troll in there that, um, he's fight, uh, that Aragorn's fighting. Okay. From what I understand, apparently, they put in, um, they were putting in Sauron in there. And I don't know if this was, and, and one of you in the comments, maybe you, if you know the story, they wanted... I don't know if it was the suits that did this, or Pete didn't trust himself at first, what you know, or trust the audience, whatever you want to call it. They thought they needed the big battle between Aragorn and Sauron at that moment while he was thrown in the ring. They that would have pissed so many people. That off. would have pissed so many people off, and they also, you know, cooler heads prevailed. They decided not to do that, and they just, you know, they just inserted a troll instead of Sauron. Um, so he, you know, if people say, well, he didn't fight a troll in that, that's why that's there. And, and be there thankful actually, that There that's actually there. was a troll fight in that scene in the book. R with Aragorn? No. Okay. With, uh, with another troll? With Pippin. <laughs> oh, with Pippin. I think it was Pippin. Yeah, I would have liked to see that. Was it Pippin that went to the fight or was it Merry? Both of them were there in the, in the movie. No, they weren't both there in the, in the, had to have been Pippin because Merry... Remember, Mary helped kill the Witch King. 
Yeah. And oh, so the bat. We didn't talk about that. The Battle of Pelennor Field. So let's let's back up. Back up. <laughs> uh, the so the scene is, and everybody rolls their eyes a little bit at this, even though it is in the book. This is absolutely canon. It's absolutely canon, but it's not. You're missing some context. <laughs> is that a fair statement? That's a fair. As always with Tolkien, you need to do your homework. Okay. <laughs> she she cuts off the head of the fell beast. Mm -hmm. um, exactly as described in the book. Mary stabs the witch king in the in the calf with a knife. Basically, he comes in. I, I don't I don't remember exactly how it happened in the in the movie. But cuts the hamstring down. He, he, he comes right up through here. Okay. Right behind the knee. Which is basically what pointing, happens in the movie. Pointing upward. <laughs> And then he kept saying, no man has defeated me. And she takes off her helmet. She goes, I am no man. She stabs him in the face and he collapses like the poltergeist house. Yeah. The problem is, is that one, it makes, it, it kind of stretches credulity that's saying, okay, well, oh, he says no man. I, I'm pretty sure women couldn't defeat him either. Just because you don't have a dick. Doesn't, <laughs> don't think that was, I, I, and Mary's not a man either. That, that's some damn fine print I'd have to look at. <laughs> um, but in the, in the book, we talked about Tom Bombadil earlier. Yeah. So we're coming back to that. Circle back around. Tom Bombadil gave them weapons. That were taken from a, the Barrow Downs. They were taken from a grave, basically. And they were uh, magic weapons. And they were, it's never specifically said, well, actually, I guess it was, it was, in the book, this scene, they're describing the knife or short sword or whatever you want to call it that Mary stabbed him with, and they, it specifically says that this was a blade crafted by a smith in, uh, I forget which of the northern kingdoms it was, but Detroit. they were, hmm? Detroit. Yeah, they were, that was at war with the witch king of Angmar at that time, and it was specifically wound about with spells Right. For the defeat of the witch said king. Witch King of Agmar, who just happens to be the person that Mary just stabbed. stabbed. <laughs> they were never given those knives. We, as we went through it, we thought, well, okay, in the extended version of the Fellowship, they were given knives by the elves. And yet, okay, magic knives by the elves, that, that could do it. The problem is, is that once they get picked up by the orcs, they lose their knives. And in fact, they find the, the scabbards or the sheaths in the, in the fire. So whether or not what happened to those knives, of course, that, that begs the question of what happened to the knives that they got from Bombadil, because the orcs would have thrown those away too. Well, that's true. So, so that's that's kind of a plot hole that Tolkien left because I'm okay, not so sure. Okay, so if we want to go with the double plot hole, that we could say that those are the if 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 it's the knife from Bombadil, then we could say it's the knives from from the elves, and maybe that's how it worked. Because if they both have the plot hole, then and again, you know, the knife, the swords that Aragorn gave them, you know, we're never told where those came from. No, they look like they came from freaking Walmart. I yeah. Can't tell. So, fine, they kill. They kill the Witch King, but it's, it's, and it's done like it is in the book, but it's missing a lot of context that you go, okay, I don't, I don't. I yeah, that, that, that big thing about, you know, no man can harm me is actually a prophecy that going back to when he was the Witch King of Angmar. Yeah. And he, there's a battle, he, he loses a battle with, I forget which king it was, and the king wants to chase him, and there's a seer with him that tells him, you know, no, don't, don't do that. It'll be the death of you. No, no man can kill right. him. So if you're wondering about why that scene plays out that way, we had a long talk about it. Just, just we've had a very long talk. About it, okay? <laughs> um, there you go. So in the end. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to say why in the book only Pippin was at the ba final battle is because Mary was really fucked up. Yeah. From stabbing the And witch they king. did show that in The Return of the King. And they did show the healing hands of the king that take him out. But if you were not aware of the healing hands of the king, which I, that, I mean, even in Tolkien's, it's like, why does he suddenly have healing hands? I don't get it. Hands of the king are hands of the healer. So said somebody, some such way back the 
so in the dark. Just, I don't know. Okay. It's it, that's a thing. Okay, just roll with it. And I actually think that was a belief. Okay, back the in, bank account of Yoda <laughs> is the bank account of a millionaire. In the it's not happening, man. In in if, wasn't that a thing back in medieval times that kings were supposed to be? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. But yeah. That, I thought they were just into raping and beheading the arms, but... But, yeah, that, that is a thing in Tolkien's universe. The hands of the king are the hands of a healer. Okay. So, so just, just roll with it. Well, just roll with it. I don't know why it was set that way. I really don't. Uh, but it doesn't... It, it isn't apparent. He does show him healing him, and he does show that his arm is all messed up because of the stabbing him. It, and it's not really spelled out, but it is there. So I'm kind of like, you know, take what you can get, I guess. Yeah, see, in the books, it was like two weeks for Mary to fully recover from that. Okay. Well, and, everybody and, was at that battle, and, and personally, I didn't have a problem with it. But yeah, Pippin takes out a troll in that battle. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was very considerate of the earth to crumble and then stop right before the good army. That was nice. That was nice. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, a very polite apocalypse. So... Uh, Frodo and Sam are laying on the rock, which we discussed in real terms. They, they would have been baked, bacon. Yeah, yeah. But that's a Tol that doesn't matter. That's yeah. a Tolkien thing. Too. I mean, just just standing on that platform above that lake of lava would have been would have been tough, very uncomfortable. But we'll give we'll give them that because it's in the book. In the What's movie. thermodynamics? Yeah, fuck, fuck that. Shit. That was one of the toughest courses I took in college. So I can I can forgive Peter Jackson. I doubt he ever took thermodynamics. <laughs> So then uh, Gandalf sends a, 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 an Eagle Uber yeah. to pick up... Uh, the SX Mechina Airlines. Yes, to pick them up. And then we get into the 75 endings. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm, 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 I'm making the easy joke, but the truth is I don't mind the endings. I feel like you've gone through this slog. You better have some wrap-ups. Yeah. I think they've all earned it. Um, I, I would suppose maybe that... Sam coming back home, they maybe could have left that one out, but I don't mind it. It's not very long. Uh, but the rest of it, I think, is great. I I mean, like that's it. actually the last line in the book. Is, it is. Welcome home, Sam. Yeah, well, I'm home. Uh, yeah, and, I'm home. Yeah. I, and I don't mind it because it's not that long. I like the stuff where they take the, where, they, where he goes to the, the Grey Havens and then takes the ship to the west. Um, you see Galadriel there. Now that you've explained that a little bit to me, that that has more meaning. But again, you have to do yeah, homework. She, for that she shit. was a very bad girl when she was young. She says she's a bad Thick girl. Bad. She was a bad girl. Uh, she was part of the kinslaying. So, uh, and she was a whore. She was a dirty, dirty <laughs> whore. Um, so, I, uh, we're at the end. We're at the end. Uh, we've gone through the endings. We've seen. Uh, I did like the I did like the little moment where Frodo, with the four are sitting at the at the uh, the bar, whatever it is, and they all have that. We're four guys that have been to war and have seen things that the rest of these people haven't, and they just can't quite connect yet. The, the little bit of PTSD, if you want to call it that, not so much. Just before Sam gets up and decides to propose to Rosie, um, or right. ask her out, or whatever. That that, that was a big part of. The wrap up in the book yeah. was Frodo basically did have PTSD. Well, and, and I don't blame him. You know, Sam and, and Pippin and, and Mary managed to reintegrate into society quite well. Yeah. But Frodo. Frodo had a tough time. It, there, there, it was a, I think I told you it was a year that passed from the time they got back to the Shire before Frodo left to go to the Grey Havens with Elrond and company. And it was during that year, he just, it was Sam commenting on it that he just seemed to retreat from society and he did, he, nobody, he didn't talk to people, that he just sat in his hobbit hole and he just retreated from society. Yeah. So overall, the three movies. Um, I've seen worse. <laughs> You've seen worse. The That's Hobbit. <laughs> I think it's a. I, I think overall it's a well done trilogy. I think it's deserving of its classic status. Yeah, said uh, special effects top notch. Yeah. Practical effects top notch. Casting, I've got a couple of quibbles, but 
nothing that I would cancel the movie for. If I'm given special effects and all that an A, give casting an A minus. Yeah. So still good. Um, the only issue, oh, and the score, my God, the score. Howard Shore is John Williams' levels of uh, iconic. Yeah. That's, and I don't that's, like using that word, but it is. That score is awesome. The only quibbles I have are with the script. I feel there were changes made just for the sake of making changes. Changes that really, that could have been done the way Tolkien wrote it, and it would have worked fine. So so here's here's my difference with you. I think that the... I think that the overall meat and themes and, and story remain intact. And that you, you, you still get the emotional ride I've, that you I've, would I've... expect. And, and the stuff that you're talking about, it is there. I don't disagree with you. But it's, it's not enough to ruin it. When, when, when Jackson was given free reign, you got the hobbits and those were ruined. Those were... Those were awful. Now there might be, if you, and there may be a fan edit or something of the Hobbit that actually works because everything is in there. It's yeah, just everything that's not in there is in there as well. Yeah, oh, the the barrels. God, the barrels. The barrels. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm, I've said this to you before. I'm going to say it one more time for your audience. My biggest issue with the movies, I think, and this is speaking as a Tolkien geek, okay. <laughs> the books are written, if you follow the conceit, the books are written by hobbits telling the hobbits side of things. It's a hobbit-centric story. Sure. And the movies shift the focus. I, uh, the hobbits, the story is in there, but it... Well, I, I mean, don't know. certainly Frodo is still the focus. I mean, he's still the primary antagonist. It's just that Aragorn is raised up to his level. Yeah, and yeah. That's that's the thing. In the books, Aragorn, you could it, you could really argue that Aragorn is a supporting character. The the hobbits, you know, all four of them are are the leads are the in leads. the book. And certainly, I don't think Merry or Pippin or any other Sam were given short shrift. Certainly, Sean Astin. I, I can't remember. Did he get nominated for a supporting actor? Or, who uh, should have been. I don't remember. It's been so. Boy, long. he should have been. He he was so good in Return of the King. So, but overall, I, I mean, I love... How many Oscar did, Oscars did those movies wind up uh, taking? Well, it was Metric Return of the Buck King that got... Return of the King was given a lot of Oscars, and some of it was for not giving enough for the first two. It was, it was like a, here you go for the whole thing. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I seem to remember that the first two didn't get as many Oscars as we thought they should, and then when they the They got plenty one, of noms. Got, yeah, they got plenty of noms, but they didn't win as many as we felt they should and then when Return of the King came and, and the, the movie was done basically then they say okay here's your Oscar <laughs> so does that wrap it up? I think so alright well we thank you for sitting through this uh, this has been a, <laughs> a long conversation and you have no idea how long a weekend it's been for oh, me oh good lord but uh, we we thought we would do something a little different here um for yeah, the, you, the the whole genesis of this is we, this is not the first time we've had that this conversation. You might be able to notice. Yeah, <laughs> yes. and, and it I I when I found out that Mark, excuse me, Yoda Yoda had uh, started a YouTube channel about movies, the idea struck me that maybe we might want to get this conversation recorded for posterity yeah and <laughs> and you have uh, i'm going to put you on the spot but you have said that you would like to in the future do some of our uh, uh skype uh live sessions maybe so D depending uh, on what you're talking about well you, you know we, we'll figure something out yeah um, we could do an hour on The Hobbit and have oh, a lot of fun. Oh, God. I'd have to watch it again. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> we could shred a movie not having watched it in a while. It's not that hard. Yeah, you know, I've, I've managed to block most of that out of my memory. Yeah. It took a lot of beer. <laughs> but I, I would, I, I, I think yeah. it's things, but I mean, I'm sure our, our audience wouldn't mind uh, yeah, throwing some comments. We'll see how it goes. But I, I do appreciate it. We'd love to get you on um, if you ever want to do a story. So we are lastmovieoutpost.com. Um, you can reach me. I have my own email address now. It is drunkenyoda at lastmovieoutpost.com. You can reach the entire site 
by contact us at lastmovieoutpost.com. And you can uh, go to, of course, www.lastmovieoutpost.com. Our YouTube channel now has its own URL, so YouTube slash Last Movie Outpost. Uh, Facebook uh, slash uh, Movie Outpost. And uh, Twitter at Drunken Yoda One or at Movie Outpost. And I, I think the Facebook might be slash Last Movie Outpost. You'll find it, just look around. If you go to lastmovieoutpost.com, we have all the links there. Uh, please comment, uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, we we sh definitely share this video. The more subscribers we can get, the more we can start doing some different things and uh, maybe monetizing this channel. So we'd really appreciate it if you help us out. Beloido? I, just to get it on record again, if you like the movies, and if you've read the books and liked the books, I cannot urge you strongly enough. Read the appendices. You don't have to read all of them. The ones that are just lists of genealogies, you can probably skip unless you're really into who's related to who. But The Tale of Years, The Tale of Aragorn and Arwen, fantastic reading and will bring you up to speed on a lot of stuff that's only hinted at in the book and a lot of stuff that is in the movie came from The Tale of Aragorn and Arwen. Right, uh, unfinished Tales. If you can find a copy of that, well worth it. Okay. Well, yeah. with that, I think we'll wrap it up, especially before I run out of space on these cameras. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> ah! Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs>